Hello, I'm Frances from Winstep Homestead, and we're talking seeds today. I've been seeing so much on other YouTube channels about starting seeds and last month talking about all their seeds and I was buried in snow <laughs> and we're still having below freezing temperatures here. But I'm finally ready to talk seeds. I did start my sweet potatoes last week, so I really got the spring fever. <laughs> and I want to talk about the seeds. I've been ordering seeds for the past few months of some specific things that I want to try. Now, last year and the year before, when I planted a garden, I just picked up seeds from Walmart or Home Depot or uh, the local hardware store. <laughs> and I didn't know about Baker Creek. A couple years ago, I'd never heard of it. I didn't know that much about heirloom. I don't even know if I'd heard the term. <laughs> so I really had quite the education on these Homestead YouTube channels about heirloom seeds and saving seeds and uh, Baker Creek and all, um, all these other places that do heirloom seeds. And so I've been ordering seeds for the past couple months. I've gone through what I already had and looked at what I had as far as successes last year or the year before and the failures that I had. And I had two different kinds of tomato plants last year. I had a small cluster tomato and I had a Roma tomato. And neither of them did really well. They didn't produce that great and their plants didn't seem to grow and it could have been, <laughs> could have been the climate, it could have been the conditions, but I planted them a couple different years now and they just haven't done as prolific as I would like. I planted twice as many last year as I did the year before and they still just didn't produce as well as I would like. On Living Traditions YouTube channel, they had a tomato that I was very impressed about the uniform size of their tomatoes and how prolific they were. And they said they were jet star tomatoes. And they say they do them every year because they are such a good producer. So I went online to try to find jet star tomatoes and I couldn't find them anywhere except Etsy. Someone on Etsy was selling jet star tomato seeds. And so these are collected from someone's tomatoes. And I have 25 in three different packets. So a total of 75 Jet Star tomato seeds. And I'm really excited about planting the Jet Star to see how they do for me. <laughs> I hope they do as well as they did for the Living Traditions Homestead. Now, I did, however, have some wonderful dark red cherry tomatoes that are called Coralic or bead cherry tomato. I believe that's a Native American word maybe, coralic. Anyway, they're a tiny dark red cherry tomato and they were delicious. They were so good. And I saved some seeds because I used all the seeds. They were actually, these seeds actually came from my brother and sister-in-law. My brother made a little tiny envelope for me and put the seeds in there and I wrote all the information from the packet on there and I used all the seeds and only ended up with one plant because they didn't transplant well. It was probably my fault. I should say I know it was my fault. <laughs> I was late getting them started and then I tried to transplant them too early. Anyway, they didn't do that well. But the one plant that did grow to maturity and produced fruit was so good that I saved seeds and they are still good. And I'm very excited to be able to plant a few more of those this year. Now, as far as the yellow cherry tomatoes, I love the yellow cherry tomatoes. They're just so sweet. They're so yummy. And 
I got from a Mountain Valley Seed Company some yellow cherry tomato seeds. I've always only bought the plants from a nursery or garden center, the yellow cherry tomato plants. And I usually would buy two of them and hopefully they would grow to maturity and I'd have uh, cherry tomatoes. But I'm gonna do them from seed this year. I bought the seeds for that. Another tomato plant that I want to try is the Amish paste tomato. I've heard about this quite a bit from other Homestead YouTube channels and I'm anxious to try these because the Roma tomatoes that I tried to grow in the past couple years were determinate and they didn't grow well and they didn't produce well. So I'm hoping that these Amish paste tomatoes are going to be a great one for my tomato sauce this year. So we're going to give those a try. Now my bell peppers and jalapenos did wonderful. I had lots of bell peppers that I was able to put up and they were just seeds that I had bought from a garden center and same for the jalapenos, but they grew really well. I was able to ferment some pickled jalapenos at the end of the year. And I had a lot of bell peppers that I was able to dice and freeze. So I was very pleased with those and I'm gonna use those again this year until they run out. However, from Baker Creek, I got some Thai chilies and I ordered them a little late in the season and they just didn't do well. I planted them two different times in the grow room under the grow light and they just didn't do well. And I ended up with maybe one or two to transplant, but they were still so tiny and they never grew. The whole season, they never grew. They just stayed real tiny. And so of course didn't produce. So I'm gonna try those again this year. I'll try to do a better job of my seed starting and my transplanting and see if I can get them to grow to maturity and get some Thai chilies from them. Now my leafy greens always do well. In fact, I still have kale growing outside and it's been snowed on and frozen out I don't know how many times and they are still productive. I get a few leaves every now and again from them. And so I'm definitely going to finish the seeds from my kale packet that I just picked up from a garden center. They're called the Dwarf Blue Curled and they're real tasty. I've used them when I first started them. I've used them for baby greens. It's delicious. And when they grow to maturity, they're very prolific. And so I'm really pleased with those kale. From Baker Creek, Last year, I ordered some arugula, but I ordered the seeds a bit late and they didn't come in time for me to plant them before summer. So I'm gonna try them this year, some arugula. I'm looking forward to getting them in in the spring. Now my spinach and my green lettuce and my little red leaf lettuce, they grew really well except for the planting conditions <laughs> where they did struggle on the slope and in the sand, but they've done really well for the past couple years. And so I've still got seeds left over. I'm gonna finish them off this year, but I'm looking forward to getting those in again in the spring right away. Now, my poor root vegetables. <laughs> I have not had much success with my root vegetables baby carrots and my long carrots, my rutabagas, my beets and radishes. Now I have these small cherry bell radishes and they did grow last year. They definitely didn't produce as quickly as they're supposed to in 21 days. <laughs> and they had done that the year before when I was in Tacoma, which I had beautiful soil over there, but here, on a slope in the sand wasn't ideal. And I did get some, but they didn't grow very well. And the rutabagas and the beets and the carrots, they didn't produce well at all. They were, uh, in Tacoma, the baby carrots and the beets, they did great. And so I got some long carrots and some rutabagas last year thinking, oh, I'm going to have a great time with root vegetables. But on the slope in the sand, they did not do well. 
but I am going to put them in the grow bed this year. I'm gonna try one more time to see if I can get my root vegetables to do well. I also bought an heirloom radish called the French breakfast. It's a little more elongated than the little tiny cherry round radishes. And they're supposed to be really tasty. So I'm gonna give those a try this year. Now, I got so excited about fermenting last year. <laughs> I was fermenting my pickles and I was fermenting my jalapenos and I fermented a lot of Jerusalem artichokes. And they're all so tasty and it was so easy that I want to make my own sauerkraut. I love sauerkraut and I've never grown cabbage. So, I got me some heirloom cabbage that I'm gonna give a try this year and see if I can't grow some good cabbage. This is an early cabbage and it's supposed to grow in only 63 days. So I'm hoping that I can get some cabbage to grow here and I can grow lots so I can make my own sauerkraut. I'm really looking forward to that. I hope it works out. And I'm gonna give my Brussels sprouts one more try. <laughs> <laughs> when I told my family I was going to try Brussels sprouts again, they just laughed because I haven't had much success with the Brussels sprout. But I'm going to try to do the seed starts, the transplant, the soil just right this year. <laughs> and I'm going to try really hard to get some Brussels sprouts. I just love fresh Brussels sprouts. And they're expensive in the store. I hardly ever buy them. But I would love to have a prolific amount of Brussels sprouts to just eat as often as I liked, as much as I liked. Now it does have a 90 day season. So I'm gonna get those seeds started right away and hopefully I can get them put out and they will produce before the weather gets hot. That's my hope. <laughs> but both my cabbage and Brussels sprouts, I'm gonna get started right away so that I can get them going. Now, I am not going to do broccoli and cauliflower this year. Number one, we love broccoli and cauliflower and we eat a lot of it. And I just can't see how I'm gonna be able to grow enough because the few times that I've actually been able to get them to produce just a teeny tiny little bit. And we buy it every week because we love the broccoli and cauliflower on the homestead. So I'm not going to try it this year. Maybe when I get more grow boxes made, as it is, I was hoping to have at least a dozen and I'm only going to have eight. So we'll see if I can't get more by next year. And I might try again when I have more space and I can grow a lot more <laughs> to make it worth all of the trouble to grow for such a little bit. And it could be the variety. I mean, I did just buy the seeds at a garden center. So it could be that I need to get the right kind, which I'm hoping that's gonna be the case for my tomatoes and my leafy greens. Now, my zucchini and my yellow crooknick did amazing last year. I did eight plants of each and they were prolific. They did, they did so much, I've still got a freezer full and I've been using them every week. I'm gonna to have to start finding uses for them nearly every day if I'm gonna get them used up before I get new ones growing again. But I'm gonna do only four plants of each instead of eight. I had done two plants when I lived in Tacoma two years ago and it didn't seem like it was enough. And so I had done all, the <laughs> I had planted so many last year and they did so good that uh, this year I'm gonna cut back at least half of what I did last year. We had squash coming out our ears. I also had some wonderful butternut squash last year. It was the first time that I had done so well with butternut squash. I was really pleased to have so many that I could store and I still have a few. But this year I'm doing a small pumpkin. Now this is an heirloom called um, Lakota. It's a small orange winter squash that's a little bit pointy at the top but it's around like a pumpkin and it's orange. And it's supposed to do well in the colder climates. So I'm looking forward to trying those this year. And being heirloom, I'm gonna save the seeds. Now my cucumbers, 
did not do that well last year. I was able to make some pickles, but they were so bitter that I couldn't eat them fresh. Even the slicer cucumbers I made into pickles. I was just picking them small and making dill or sweet pickles, but they didn't produce very well. I would have loved to have had some to eat fresh, but they didn't produce well and the little bit that they produced was very bitter. So I'm gonna try them again this year in the grow boxes and I'm hoping that I can give them enough water this year because I've saved so much in the tanks and having them not grow in the sand where unfortunately uh, I lost a few of my cucumber plants with uh, gophers digging up underneath them. Hi, Diana. <laughs> so I'm hoping I can do better with the cucumbers and have, an, have some fresh ones to eat this year. But uh, we loved the fermented dill pickles and sweet pickles that I made. So even if I can only make pickles, that'll be fine because we're definitely making use of them. They're delicious. Now the tomatillos grew wonderful as well. We were able to put up a lot of green salsa along with, of course, some green tomatoes. We did salsa as well, but the tomatillos did wonderfully. They grew really well and I'm gonna do those again this year. Those are also the Mountain Valley. Now my green beans, I just bought them at uh, Garden Center and they did really well too. And I still have, I only used about half, half of the packet. So I'm gonna plant the rest of them in a grow box. So if I can't fill the grow box with what's left, I'll probably get some more, but there's still quite a few in there. So I think I'll be able to fill a grow box with those. And the green beans did wonderfully. And we love green beans. I was able to put some up. Hopefully this year I can put up even more because I'm gonna fill a whole grow box with those. Now, I was really excited when some of the Homestead YouTube channels were growing loofah. I've never grown loofah, but I have used loofah that I've bought as scrubbies. And so I want to try growing them. And so I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna start them as seeds because they do have a long growing season and I only have 111 growing days here. I mean, that's the average. I probably have a little bit more than that, but I'm gonna start the seeds early so that I can transplant a good size plant out around the water tanks. I know that they have a really prolific vine and beautiful flowers, and I would love to have them growing all over my water tanks. I think that would be beautiful. So that's my hope. Plus, I will love to have some loofah. I think it would be so fun to grow those. Now, my watermelon grew wonderful. I had the most delicious watermelon. And this is the Blacktail Mountain watermelon. And they were so good. And they're a small round watermelon. They were so tasty. They grew so beautifully. I'm gonna plant a lot more. And I saved a bunch of seeds, so I have plenty to plant. But we just enjoyed them so much. They were so good. My cantaloupe and honeydew I saved seeds for. They didn't do as well. I'm hoping this year I can plant them in grow boxes and give them more water maybe. I don't know if it was the sand, the slope, the lack of water in the summer, but I'm gonna give them another try. <laughs> we'll see if I can get them to work this year. But those seeds were given to me by my brother and sister-in-law and they were heirlooms. So I saved the seeds so that I could try them again, see if I can't get them to work out a little better. The seeds for my corn were given to me by my brother and they are the Painted Mountain from Baker Creek. And they are a beautiful corn. They did terribly. They started wonderfully. All the seeds germinated beautifully. And I just planted them straight into the ground. Unfortunately, they didn't do that well in the sand and they definitely didn't do well in the drought conditions because I couldn't water them as well as I would have liked. So I'm gonna give them one more try. See if I can't get them to do a little better. If I plant them where they can have better water conditions. Now, all of my herbs 
I saved a lot, a lot of dill seed and I saved a lot, a lot of cilantro seed. And I don't have those that wintered over, but I do have thyme, oregano, basil, parsley, and sage that wintered over, as well as my, my Thai basil. My plan is to plant an herb spiral. And so I want to be able to transplant all of the herbs that I brought in last fall and have wintered over inside and we've been using fresh herbs all through the winter. It's been wonderful. And I'm going to, in the spring, plant them in an herb spiral and probably add a few more seeds. I didn't save any chive and I have these um, Chinese chives from Baker Creek that I will be planting as well. And I'm really looking forward to have a herb spiral. They look really fun and I have all the space I need for that. So, and I have lots of rocks that I found to, to build it with. So I'm looking forward to building an herb spiral. But that's my plans for my vegetable garden this year. I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait to get started. But unfortunately with freezing temperatures, I have to wait. <laughs> but I appreciate all of you. I'm so grateful for you joining me on this journey. Please like and subscribe. I am so grateful for you. Until we meet again.